It's the voice of the one and only DJ Scream, letting you know that you are now in tune to the Casual Flex, where culture meets sports and casuals are welcome. Now here's your host, Philip Dukes. Yo, welcome to the Casual Flex. I'm your host, Philip Dukes, aka Dukes D Scoop. Catch me on Twitter and Instagram at Dukes D Scoop. Make sure you go down there, hit that like and subscribe button for me. Uh, before I get started, uh, this sh- this episode is brought to you by the God Brand. Uh, this is a brand developed by Janice Hunt Jones, who is an author and an Auburn graduate. This is her new book, From Dust to Glory. Uh, it's a look at her walk with Jesus Christ and how it has affected her and how it can help us. As Lord knows, guys like me and Jared McIntyre need prayer for sure. Yeah, we definitely and, uh, do. <laughs> Hey, now, now that, that leads me into my guest today. I got Jairus McIntyre, Auburn legend, former Kansas City Chief, uh, head coach of one of the top programs in Florida, uh, Tampa Catholic. J-Mac, what's going on, bro? What's going on, my brother? How you doing tonight? Man, I'm cool, man. I'm cool, man. It, 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 it's good, man. And um, to finally get you on again, like we, uh, it, 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 it's, it's cool just to see how everybody, how, you know, from my era back in Auburn, like it's doing their thing and you look up. Not you know, I thought so. I do recruiting for 24-7. And uh I'm looking at all these players, Auburn's recruiting. And I'm saying, dang, who's that head coach? They must got a hell must got a heck of a coach. And then I look up at this uh Jarris McIntyre. So man, tell me about how's your experience been when somebody who's an Auburn man through and through, and you've got players that Auburn is interested in. How do you separate those two to make sure that you're not clouding your players judgment because i know they respect you and and selling them you know and just telling them the real deal about how you feel about auburn like is that a fine line for you to walk yeah yeah it is man uh just really knowing what auburn's about mm-hmm. auburn's gonna sell itself mm-hmm. you know i think a lot of times uh everybody has a different situation so you know what i try to do is is give them the information about everybody right. and let them pick um, of course, I'm a little biased to Auburn because I went there. Right. You know, it's love. It's great. Uh, it's a great environment, great place. So um, I don't stare them that way. But, but you know, Auburn's going to sell itself. And if they go up there, they're going to love it because it's one of the, you know, the best places in the country to go play college football and go to school in general. So um, I don't I don't push them that way. But, but it is a fine line because there are a lot of other great universities out there that recruit my school. Right. And I want to continue them, you know, continue for them to recruit my school, right? right? And not everybody to Auburn, but at the end of the day, when you go visit up there, you know, it's it's a lovely place, and uh, I don't even really got to push them that way when once they go visit to see it. So um, fine line, but at the end of the day, if they, they want to go to the plains, I ain't gonna say no. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so right. this year you got one of the top linebackers in the country, and uh, Lewis Carter. Uh, tell me about how he's developed and how proud you are of him as far as seeing how he became everybody, everything that you knew he could be. Yeah, man, I'm really proud of him, man. He's a, he's an outstanding kid, hard worker, you know, can play running back. He's going to college to play linebacker, fly around, but just the leader he became uh, through, you know, from the start when I got him as a freshman uh, through a senior year, um, you know, he's one of the special players, one of the better players I've ever coached. And, you know, I'm proud of him, and he, like I said, he's continued to work hard to get ready for that next level. So, he'll, um, you know, I think he's going to do great things. So, when Auburn recruited him, they got in a little bit late because I think they were a little concerned about his size when some other schools were like, we don't care. We're looking at, like, it, he's a ball player, regardless if he's six feet, if he's 5'9", if he's six four, it don't matter. He's a ball player. So, as as Auburn began to come around and say, you know what, you know, it's his film. They saw more of his film and they saw what type of ball player he was. Do you think that Auburn getting in late hurt them in his recruitment process? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, kids want to feel the love early. Right. He didn't, you know, didn't feel the love early. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. You know, everybody's going to be entitled to your, their opinion and what they think as a player. Um, I think it's a hell of a player regardless if he's, you know, six foot, six, three, six four. He's going to be an outstanding football player, you know, uh, at the next level. Uh, you know, I, you know, I know Harson was there at the time when his recruitment started. So, you know, it was a little different. Um, so, um, getting in late, obviously, didn't help at all. Um, you know, he had, he had love for Auburn. He liked Auburn. Um, so, 
unfortunately, they, you know, they came in late and, and uh, didn't help themselves at all. But that happens, you know, it happens all the time. Sometimes coaches do come in late and, 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 and kids end up born there. So it kind of right. goes both. At the end of the day, I think the kids want to feel the love from the beginning all the way to the end through the recruitment process. Yeah, I think that's really important. Uh, sometimes having that early evaluation or prognosis of who a player can be helps in the long run because sometimes it's like, you know, uh, from when I talked to Lou, it was like, you know, Venables wanted me at Clemson. As soon as he got to Oklahoma, I was one of his first offers. Like, you know, he always felt that uh, Lewis Carter is committed to Oklahoma, uh, for those that don't know. But he made mention of, you know, the love that he got there, you know, how often that he called him. So now Auburn has Coach Hugh Freeze. And from what you know about Coach Freeze, do you think that Auburn may have an outside shot at a kid like Lewis Carter? And what do you think that Hugh Freeze brings different to the table that you haven't been seeing lately from a high school coach's perspective from Auburn? Um, I haven't heard from Hugh, so I, I really don't know. Um, I, I don't know if they've reached out to Lewis. Um, I've heard great things about him through through, through Coach Cadillac as far as um, him as a coach and, and and just you know getting to know him over the course of this last week or last couple of weeks. So I do know um, – and I well, not, not know, but I've heard great things about him. And uh, obviously, I look forward to meeting him and, and talking to him, you know, just being an alumni and a former player and a high school coach. Um, so not necessarily sure, you know, of, of that whole dynamic of what's, you know, what's really going on or if they reach out or if they're going to reach out. I don't know. I know he's coming to Oklahoma at this point. So right. um, I think I didn't focus on that. Um, but, but like I said, from what I heard from Coach Cadillac and, 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 and others that, you know, he is a – a good coach and a hell of a recruiter and, and all the stuff that you want and, and need at that level um, or at this level of play in the SEC West and, and to be on a national stage. Nah, it's, it's, and it's dope that you brought up uh, Lack. Um, so I saw Lack visited your school yesterday. Yeah. 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 What was that? Oh. Yeah, so, so with you guys being friends and um, you know, you guys have a great relationship, even, even back in the day to see y'all together a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Black Cool is a fan too, and yeah, yeah. when uh, how was that? You know, when you just think about it, like, hey man, you know, it's 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 twenty years later, and one of my best friends is coming to recruit a guy at my school. Like, does it feel weird, or did, or, or do you ever felt like you would have saw each other in this role? Like, what what, yeah. what goes it's, through your mind when something like that happens? It's crazy because it's like it's, it's it's full circle because it's like right. you can remember, you know, being college kids and hanging out and playing ball and you know, getting to the league and hanging out and, you know, playing ball and, and chopping it up, but never thinking you're going to be a coach. Like, I, don't, I ain't really think I was going to be a high school head coach. <laughs> you ever thought he's going to be a, you know, running back coach, associate head coach, or interim head coach, you know. Right. You know, at Auburn. So it's like, this is kind of, you know, when you when you really, really put in perspective, it's like you're really just pouring back. Like he always said, serving these young men and helping them um, and, and doing something. Right. That, that you, that you love. I mean, you know, you're older, you don't play no more, but then up to coach and serve and give back and, and, and chop it up with the kids the same way we were years ago. Um, it just kind of comes full circle. And I, and I was telling, you know, Coach Knox that he recruited me uh, to Auburn mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm playing for him. And, you know, 20 or some years later, he's back at the school recruiting kids. I'm telling them stories about how he used to yell at me, and it's just <laughs> they telling him stories how I yell at them. Right. So it's uh, yeah, man, it's 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 really uh, really a blessing to be able to still be able to stay in the game and do stuff and help kids. So um, the whole Cadillac situation, I'm super proud of him. It was great to see him, you know, on the sideline as the head coach, running up and down the field, you know, head coaching against Nick Saban, winning some games at Auburn, the game in Jordan here. You know, it's just. Um, a lot of a lot of good, and, and I'm glad he's still there. And they kept him on to be able to continue to build off off what they did or what he did, and and, and brought the energy back to Auburn. So when Lack didn't get the full time position, did you sense any type of disappointment out of him and y'all in like in y'all conversations, or was it more so just like, hey, dog, like what? Because one thing one one thing I do know about Lack, and every time I see him, it's the same thing. He's so <coughs> even, like. People don't really realize they see the lack jumping up and down on the sidelines. 
But man, Lack is so cool. Like, you know what I mean? You you can yeah, be yeah. in a room with Lack for 30 minutes. He might say two words. Like, yeah. You know, and he just gonna peep the scene. So seeing that side of him was different. So did you did you sense any type of disappointment from him as cool as he is, or was it just the same old Lack? Just like, hey man, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think initially he may have been said he was disappointed, like, you know, for a minute, I guess. But uh right. you know, they talk and you know, did some deals and negotiated some stuff and he realized he would be there and still be able to help out and talk to Hugh and Hugh, you know, kind of laid out the plan or whatnot. I think he felt like, you know, inter- you know, the energy was still there to continue to help right. build this thing, get us back how we need to, you know, getting some players in there, obviously, um right. for safety. And just being Auburn, man, and, and, and you know, lighting that, that stadium up the way, you know, he had man. it. And, and Never seen and, nothing like it. Never seen yeah, nothing and, like it, dog. And, and that's what I'm saying, man. In that vibe, in that environment, and back to, you know, obviously 2013 in the 2010 season, 04, right. you right. know, through, through the 2000s, obviously, when we was there, you know, at school, it, 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 you know, you just had that vibe at all. You know, when you're playing George, when you're playing right. Bama, bless you, it's, it's, um, I want to get back to that, you know, and I think you know, with you and, and having some of those guys on staff and continue to build a staff, it, it would be uh, it'll be interesting and fun, and hopefully he can you know switch it up and turn it around with you know with the help of Coach Cadillac. Um, I think he you know is excited right now being able to continue to be there, recruit you know, and, and help out in in any capacity that he has to. No, nah, that's dope. Uh, yeah. I was gonna oh. say too, we were talking about Coach Knox fussing at you and uh, you fuss, yeah. fussing at your guys. Yeah, that's yeah, a wide. Yeah. You got a wide receiver down there. That's a twenty-four kid. What's his name again? Yeah. T.J. Moore. T.J. Moore. T.J. Moore. Is it Terrence Moore? Yep, Terrence Moore Jr. Yep. Terrence yep. T.J. Moore. Tell yep. us a little bit about T.J. Moore, uh, his potential, and what what do you tell him in order to keep him grounded with all of the attention that he's getting with him being one of the highest ranked wide receivers in the country? Yeah, yeah, man. I just try to uh, tell him to stay focused, work on the little things. Um, they tell all the guys that, but just working on the little things, being on time, working hard, um, getting in and out of your cuts, blocking, mm-hmm. uh, just, just get being early, staying late, just right. a little thing I think that helps you when you get to that next level. Um, outstanding talent, man. I mean, dude goes up one hand, great ball skills, really natural uh, at, at what he does in a lot of stuff, but it's just those little things like that that Knox taught us, um, in in the small things that are, you know, playing their position. So he's a hell of a player, great kid, works hard, and he's going to continue to do that. But I just try to go, you know, the little things. So so when he gets to the next level, he has a, a easier transition and being able to get on the field to make plays. When he got his offer from Auburn, I sensed a lot of excitement there. Um, From what you know in you guys' conversations, now, what does TJ like most about Auburn? Um... I think just the tradition and seeing how energetic it is there in the crowd. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like we said, we stated earlier, obviously not known to have a lot of receivers uh, like some of the other schools, but being able to maybe start something and build something mm-hmm. similar to what the, the, the school across the state did maybe 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, uh, but I, I just think, you know, he kind of sees obviously with you, um, the guys that they've had in the past with you yeah. know, DK and uh and uh, what's my man's name? DK and the other kid they had uh AJ Brown. Um right. I, I guess, you know, those big kind those big receivers that are able to go up and make plays and do good stuff. I right. think uh, seeing that and seeing what Hugh does and what he did at Liberty is also intriguing as well. Right. When you look at uh Hugh when you watch Hugh Freeze's offense, do you think he's going to throw it more when he gets to Auburn? Do you think he'll yeah. run it more? You think he's going to throw it more, huh? I think he's going to throw it more, but I think he does know the base of Auburn football. Right. And maybe what we have on the roster, I'm not sure what Tank going to do, whatever it may be. But I do know um, they are going to probably throw that ball around, man. I think he's known for that. I think that's what he's going to do. Right, okay. Now, I think – so when it comes down to right now, there isn't a defensive coordinator in Auburn. How important do you think not having your coordinators are right now? Like, is it is it a is, is it a bad thing in recruiting? Like, because right now you're in the midst of you got every school in the country coming to see your guys. Because we didn't even talk about Big Eddie. Like, mm-hmm. 
Like you, you, you've got top 100 guys all over your campus. You're seeing schools come in with everything already lined up. You got the Nick Sabans of the world. You got the Brent Venables. You got Kirby Smart. You got everybody. You got the NIL there. Everything is together. With Auburn transitioning right now and not having their coordinators in place, is that something? Do you think it's a drawback, or do you think that you know just as, as long as they get them in, they'll be fine? I think with a twenty-three kid, it's definitely a drawback, or, or a portal kid who's trying to figure out where they want to go. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Right. Like you won't know, you won't know who the coordinator is. Right. You know, obviously, you want to know your position coach and the coordinator. Right. You got the head coach, so so you know, as a as a as a linebacker or as a D, a D lineman, you're gonna want okay, who's this guy? He's calling the defense. What type of defense? Does he like guys my size? Will they will I fit into this scheme? So I really feel like it's very, very important. I think offensively, if you know the head coach is the offensive play caller, it's a little different. So, you know, the offensive guy's gonna know, okay, he's gonna call the plays. I mean, let's be real. He's gonna he's gonna hire a coordinator and give him some money, but he's gonna play the, he's gonna call the play. So I think now in the sake of Auburn, it may be who's the D coordinator. Okay. Um so that, I think that's how I look. But I think the quicker you have a full staff. You can recruit, recruit all the positions. It won't be as many questions asked. So um, I definitely think, to answer your question, absolutely, it, it matters having a coordinator and position coaches too. You know, right. um, I know we, we filled up most of the staff at Auburn, but I, but I would, you know, the sooner we can get it all done, I think the better. All right. So when you built your staff at Tampa Catholic, one of the top high schools in Florida, what did you look for in each position role? Like, like when you got your quarterbacks coach, did you want somebody who was more like, did, did, like what traits and what type of attitudes and personalities were you looking for in your, in your coordinators and your position coaches? And did it take you a while to put that together? Or was it just like, you just kind of knew you already had guys? Well, I already had some guys um, that were already basically there that I, that I was comfortable working with. Others, I think, really, is just managing your guys and knowing the game. Mm -hmm. um, some people are going to be different. Some are going to be yellers. Some are going to, you know, have that vibe to where they don't have to yell, but they're able to get their point across. So, um, for me, it's just a mixture of that, you know, mm -hmm. being able to manage your guys, making sure they do what they got to do, stay out of trouble, be on time, focus during practice, you know, all, all the, the little things. Um, but also having the knowledge of the game, because you you know you, when you teach a high school kid, some of these kids haven't even played right um, football until they get to high school. So it's right. sometimes I really really work on the fundamentals of of the game. Need a real teacher. I was gonna say, did you hire your coordinators first, or did you hire your position coaches, or did it even matter? Um, so I, I already basically hired coordinators. Okay, and it kind of trickled down. Maybe they knew somebody that wanted to coach. Um. And things of that nature. So I, I would hire the coordinators first because you don't want to hire me personally. Position coaches that have to fit in and coach with coordinators that they're not used to. Um, right. So you know, but I think I this, get, yeah, but that's want to get guys I, familiar, right? Yeah, you got some familiarity. But I think at this uh -huh. point, it is um, should we just need some coordinators in there so these kids know you know who they're gonna be playing for? Okay. So look, we I gotta ask you this. All right, so go crazy Cadillac. Yeah. Go crazy Cadillac, the iconic run in the Iron Bowl, right? Mm -hmm. You right there with him the whole way. Carnell Williams at the tailback. They'll hand it off to Williams up the middle. 25, cuts it inside. 30, 35, 40. There goes Cadillac. To the 50, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, to the 15, 10. Go crazy, Cadillac. What's going through your mind? When you see lack breaker, you right there with them. Like it, and you know, so now the kids high five, like when they going down like that, like y'all could have did that. That would have been hard. Yeah. But yeah. like, you know, what was going through your mind when you seen lack break? First of all, that stadium was loud. Ooh. You know, usually when you're playing, it kind of zones out, but boy, you could hear it. You could hear the energy. It was, it was, it was crazy. Like I said, right. okay, it was crazy, but um, iconic moment. People still talk to me to this day about it all the time. Right. You almost know, like, where you, you know, just, you know, like, just like we talk about it now. And honestly, it was just, just, just a great night, great play. Um, blocked it up well. But, but you know, I, of course, I wanted to get down that sideline and, and prevent anybody else from getting there, making a play. Right. Um, 
um, not realizing I'm running fast, trying to trying to you know cut, you know cut off the any defender that was coming. So it, it was a great moment. Um, I just remember the stadium being so loud and, and hoping that I got to that end zone before anybody got to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I figured he he you know he know like, I ain't I wasn't gonna get caught. So right. I was just and I you know I watched it over and over again just to see the energy and the way it was blocked up and you know the play call it was it was all um pretty pretty amazing that night and you know, you know I was glad that we were able to win um and keep you know keep that stuff rolling and you know, go to the bowl game beat Wisconsin so I think it helped propel some some energy into that 2004 season and I always you know kind of be grateful for that moment and in, in, in Auburn history man so I was talking to uh DeMarco McNeil yeah. Uh, matter of fact, we was at a uh, Spence wedding in Houston. It's a long time ago. Like maybe I forgot when it was, but we was at the wedding in Houston, and Marco was like, "Man, we laid the foundation for that O four team. I felt like we should have got more recognition. Like we laid the foundation. Did you ever feel like so when you was watching them? Now you in the league, you ain't really tripping. Like you, you, you in the league already. But watching that O four team, were you thinking like, dang, no, man, we could have? Because that year y'all went in the O three rank what? Five? Yeah, five, two, three, four. We well, some one time we were number one. Right. Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that was a learning experience for 04. Okay. I feel like we had the team in 03. Uh for whatever reason. You know, people could say, Oh yeah. But we had a team in 03. Um right. we had a team, the players. I right, for whatever reason it didn't work. But right. we finished on um, then I think in 04, um, coaches included, I think they had an idea of, okay, we know we went through in 03. Let's make the changes. Let's do what we got to do because we're still super talented. And let's go do what we got to do to try to win it in 04. And I, and I really feel like 03 was just a learning experience, you know, for coaches included, like I said, to help us and help the program. So in 04, we didn't make the same mistakes. And and obviously um, made some changes, you know, with the offense. Um, other, you know, it, it really, really, really helped. I think Jason Campbell and, and the whole Auburn football program with with some of the, the stuff that you know they were able to do with the changes and the learning experience in in two thousand and four. I think um, yes, you could say we laid the foundation, but at the end of the day, you know, we, you know, we were on the stage able to try to run the table and be what we should have been, but it didn't happen. So I, I, I could say we laid the foundation, but as far as getting credit, you know what I mean? You get credit for for, for winning games and being um, hard-nosed Auburn football players and Auburn men, but you right. don't, you, know, you ain't going to get no trophy. You ain't getting no trophy. If you don't win it all, you ain't get no trophy. So, right. Right. Um, you know, with the with the recognition and all that, I mean, it is what it is. You know, 04, they did what they had to do to, to, to win them all. And and that was you know that's what it is you know win win every game and for, unfortunately I didn't get a shot at the uh, at the at the championship in 04, the BCS championship but we all know you know that we're undefeated and we call ourselves national champs no, for and sure. national champions in my book so so that you know that's how I look at the whole that situation. Let's talk about oh hey man what what, what got into you in 03, dog like man, yeah. it's it's like oh hey what happened like you was like you know. Yep. You, hey, you, you were always a solid wide receiver, like no cap. Like you, you had a, a running back's bill, right? Fast as hell, right? And it, and in that year, I think was it Vanderbilt game was your coming out party? Yeah, Vanderbilt. Yeah. Cause speaking of oh, yeah, because speaking of oh three, we ain't school. We ain't school. We won a week two. LSU. Mm. I'm sorry, USC <coughs> or. Jordan Tech. Jordan Tech in the A. I remember that. In the A. They yeah. picked up your boy, um, whatever his name, the little, little, little light skin uh, quarterback. Uh, Reggie uh, Ball. Had him in the air, picked him up. I mean, I've been messing the boys <laughs> today. Yeah, and, and, and they beat us. They had my boy, they had him, they, they carried him off the Rudy, field. Rudy, Rudy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, man, Vandy, you know, I, I went out, made a couple plays, broke some tackles. And honestly, man, that helped me get drafted, bro. Like, to be real, like, that, that, that was, you know, I always made some plays here and there at Auburn, through Auburn, but. That year, I was like, look, you know, do or die. Last right. season, you know, anytime I touch this ball, I'm trying to go to the crib. So, um, me, I just, I just took that mentality to be completely honest. You know, to answer your question, you know, three, it was like, look, when I catch this ball, 
they gonna have to they gonna have to drag me off this field. You know what right. I mean? They gonna face mash me. They gonna do something. I ain't that's going. How, that's how it look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I was like, when I touch this ball, coach. They going I'm, I'm trying to scope. Right. You know. So so um that is what I uh that was the approach I took, and and, and I, I think that's really really helped me. You know, that season and, and making those plays and being able to make plays after the catch and all that other good stuff. So that's how I thought. That's how I was playing. Man, so did you ever like what with your build and how tough you were? I mean, some of them stiff arms, shake it, break it, tackles like multiple tackles on the same play. Did you ever have? Did you ever play any running back, or did you ever think about yeah, playing yeah, running yeah. back? Yeah, I did growing up. That's all I really played until I got to high school. So okay. that was that was in me um, naturally. My, my father he played at Auburn running back. Right. In the league, you know, for a little bit with, with Atlanta and Dallas play running back. So um that was always in me, you know, a little bit. You know, I was, of course, you know, I had that build and I lifted and was strong. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna take the approach, man. If I get in the space, I'm I'm, I'm playing like a running back. So um yeah. So did. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now, this this the other thing like people may not know. <laughs> Bro, your shoe game. Yeah. I get now, you know, now I get credit for my shoe game, but dog, your shoe game, like I'm a new. I'm I'm like a okay shoe guy. <laughs> your shoe game, yeah. Yo, let's estimate. Now back when we was in school, I knew when the Jordans was finna come out because J Mac already had them. Cause <laughs> I knew when the I, what Jordans come yeah. out. I'll go see what J Mac got on. Oh, okay, they'll be yeah. on next week. Yeah, right. yeah. So how, in your estimate, your estimate, your estimation, how many pair of Jordans you think you got? Hey. I don't even know, bro. I don't know. I got a lot. I got a lot. But um, uh, man, I, I always, from when I was young, right. Whenever I was able, you know, have motivation, parents get your grades, do this, do that, you get Jordans. And ever since I started getting them, I just it was an addiction. Yeah. No Jays, you know what I mean. And then and then after that, it was you know kind of flipping to the ones, the Air Force ones, and then from there, you know. So it was it was uh it was something that I loved to collect, you know, and I enjoyed. And I always wanted to have right. You know, preferably them Jays early, but of course I had the Beyonds, the Griffies, and all the other, you know, all the other shoes. So, so it yeah. was, uh, it was something that I always just had a fetish for, man. Still do. So, man, yeah, you know, it's yeah. crazy. So when I go out, like, and I'm doing interviews, I'm covering something, right? The first thing the kids will come up to me and say, "Hey, aunt, hey, hey, where you get the shoes?" Or that, and I and I and I start noticing that, like. Man, these kids, like, you know, they enter the shoes like I am. So that's, the, I might get an interview before the next person because of, you know, the shoes I got on my feet. <laughs> Have you noticed that you've been able to use that as kind of like a bridge to like kind of connect with some of the kids? Now, you know what? I think a lot of times, you know, I think they all kind of call us OG. Right. When, sometimes when I'm out, you know, I'm in my, my regular coaching gear, so I just probably got some Nike, you know, coaching shoes or whatever. They ain't really seen the action. They don't know. Shoe game, shoe game. <laughs> they don't know. You they know, know, I come in the basketball game with some with some Jays, they're going to be like, damn, coach, you, ooh, ooh, you, you know. And I'm like, bro, I've been doing this. I've been it doing ain't this. nothing new. Look. I've been I, doing this. Man, look, man, I remember, bro, like, it wasn't a whole lot of folks on white tees. And when I see you on the white tees early, I was on the white tees, I said, Oh, yeah. bro, okay, okay. J Mac on the white tee, he know what's going on. So at the end yeah. of the day, you know, so I was like, oh yeah, J Mac got J Mac got some drip. So I always had respect yeah. for you from that from for sure. All right, so you you have this great senior season. You get drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. At this time on the Chiefs, the Chiefs had an All Star team, bro. Like they, it was talent everywhere. I think was I think you got was Trent Green the quarterback. Trent Green, yep. Yeah. You got Trent Green that quarterback, right? You got Priest Holmes. You got Larry Johnson at tailback. You got Tony Gonzalez, Jared Allen. Like, so when you stepped into this locker room, how big did your eyes get looking at guy? Like, like we played mad and these guys we used it. Like, in the next year, you playing with them. How was that like as far as in there? Dante Hall, like, like X how, the X Fat. We we gotta talk about Dante. Tell my favorite player. Like, yeah. So how was it when you looked in that locker room coming out of Auburn, being like one of the, like the big man and going in there and be like, dang, boy, I, these are literally Hall of Famers. And, and the crazy part is, you named all them dudes and our linemen. We had Willie Roof, who hasn't been Rolf. inducted. And we had a cat named Will Shields, who's they've been in, yeah, Hall of Famers. I forgot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, 
No, that shit, it was it was it was crazy, bro. Like it was really a great experience seeing those dudes, seeing how they work, their attitudes, you know, just different, you know, just different kind of dudes. So, you know, you know, like priest chilling, cool, dude, hanging out, just chilling. Right. Will shit saying nothing, you know, working hard, you know, family guy. Big Willie Rove. I mean, he, he, at that time in his career, he he was, you know, limping around, but he get out there, it looked like he ran a full set. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? So it was just, it was really just um a blessing and, and amazing to see those guys be able to be on, you know, on a team with them and and, and out there and huddle with them, you know, in certain situations. It was it was really awesome. Um, and I really wanna, you know, thank Dick Vermeil. You know, he drafted me and gave me that opportunity to, you know, to be around. He's a Hall of Fame coach. Shoot, I forgot that. Coach. You know I mean? Not even forget that, but it's like, yeah, Hall of Fame coach, Willie Rose in the Hall of Fame, uh, Will Shields in the Hall of Fame. I think Dante Hall should be in the Hall of Fame. Tony G. Tony uh, Gonzalez, yeah, T. Guns in the Hall of Fame. So it's just like, when you look at it, I'm like, damn, I really was like around these Hall of Famers in their prime type stuff. So, um, nah, man, I loved it. Um, so it was really, really a good experience. I never, you know, changed for the world. Um, did, um, so, that coming from a, a NFL home with your dad being a, a NFL running back, what kind of advice did he give you to get acclimated to the league? Really just being in shape. It's it's a job. It's a business. You can get released. It can keep you at any day. You know what I mean? So so take it for what it's worth. When you're there, do everything you can because you never know what it'll end. It's not for long. Save your money. Save home. your money. Save your bread because, you know, and I, and, I, and I was really, really fortunate to have him tell me that because you see a lot of dudes that don't. Um, but but I'm, honestly, just day by day, just grind day by day. You know, he's one of them, you know, dudes that was so caught up in the football and we going out to train and we, you know, you're going to play ball, you're going to be respectful, you're going to play hard, but we're not doing all this, you know, how cats do. Now, I'm, you know, I don't know if they do it up there in the A, they'll be in Tampa, driving to Miami to play Little League and all that, hey, you know, hey, like. Listen. Yeah, Little league you know in Atlanta, it, like them little league games look like high school games, bro. It, yeah, it, it, yeah. It's crazy. Like it really is. Like, like, yeah, like, so, yeah. yeah. So it's 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 uh, it just always gave me just that that quick, you know, hard nose, no nonsense. Um, I guess advice: work hard, do what you're supposed to do. You know, don't be with the BS, and and good things will happen. And uh, that's what I did throughout my career, even when I got up to the to the NFL. So it's uh. I said it was a blessing, man, to be able to be around those guys, and coached and, and experienced that, and um, to play for all, you know the, the best university in the world, in all right. the university. And, and, and uh, maybe when you look back, you just say like, "Damn!" Like when I was growing up, I said I wanted to get drafted to the NFL. I really said I wanted to go to Auburn because my dad wanted to. You know, right. I was really, really able to go to Auburn and get drafted to the NFL. That's then was crazy. Two, like looking back, like damn, and, and, and I really. You know, I was talking to you. It's kind of like to put it in perspective. It's like, man, you know. And now I'm back in, you know, my high school, giving back, helping these kids, trying to get them. Um, it's really just you can, you know, it's when you talk when you look at it like that. It's like, wow, that's all you can really say, you know. So being able to, but to talk about it with, with great dudes like you, man. Man, go I, ahead on, man. We, Stop, man. We not know each other for hours, <laughs> hanging out, man, going out. And all that other stuff in, in, in AU, man, it, it's just um, it's really a blessing that we nah. here talking about and just talking about old stuff. We, nah. And we ain't even tell we ain't telling none of the stories. Cause I got the I got the Christian folks that sponsor me today, so we ain't gonna tell all the stories. We ain't okay, gonna tell okay. Yeah, we just gonna yeah, we just gonna keep it PG. He <laughs> gonna keep it PG with CP. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, J Man, let me. Is Arrowhead Stadium louder than Jordan here? Hell no. Huh? No. Jordan has Stadium. I'm gonna tell you, man, straight up. The the two loudest places I've ever heard is Jordan Hare Stadium and LSU at night. Bottom line. LSU and Jordan Hare are louder. LSU are louder than Arrowhead. Absolutely. Louder than Oakland. Yeah, absolutely. Huh? Arrow, Arrow, Arrowhead is Arrowhead is definitely louder than Oakland. They Las Vegas now, obviously, but Arrowhead is the loudest NFL stadium. What's the loudest NFL stadium you played in? Arrowhead. Arrowhead. What's second? Mile high. Gotta be mile high. Mile high. I've been to Green Bay. How was Lambo? 
Limbo's loud. Limbo's loud, but I will say Arrowhead is the loudest. Okay. And just overall, the LSU, like, of course, when you're on the road, it seems louder. But I would say, like, that was louder than Jordan Hare. But obviously, we're on the road, so they're going to be a little louder when you're on offense. Right. But um, as far as right. loudest that I've heard. Right. So, uh, but NFL. Yeah, when, when it comes to, all right, all right. So, <laughs> you got Jordan Hare and Arrowhead. Right now, if you were, it, it, so if you had to pick a place and you're on offense, <laughs> right? No, no, let, let's change this. Let's change this. You got a, a quarterback that's scary, right? NFL quarterback. Do you think it would be harder for an NFL quarterback to play in Jordan Hare than it would be in a away stadium with NFL fans? Jordan Hare. In the end zone where we come out, the side right. we come out, right. there where the student section was, when I, know, I don't know if it's the student section. Right. On the end, Jumbotron is? Yeah. On that end, nah. If you down there, that's loud. Nah, it, okay. <laughs> it ain't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you can't hit down there, man. Like, you can't hit. It's, no, it's real. It's real. You don't let it be night. Don't let. Hey, man. When I, hey, man. The 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 Texas A and M game. Uh, it was so crazy down there. Like for real, for real. It was like crazy, crazy. Like, I was yeah, like hey, man, they was tripping. I'm gonna tell you one another. Uh, an- another uh cool memory of Auburn was. Man, what about when Rudy had his coming out party? That Wyoming game. That was Wyoming. a crazy game. Gilliard knocked the boy helmet. The ball went the other way. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy drugged the man 15 yards. <laughs> that was my first. That was my first game. That was my first game. And I was like, dang. It was, that was you know what? That was your first game because you reasserted. Man, you yep. don't even remember this. When I came to Count War Eagle, you was probably one of the first people I saw. We was uh y'all was up there at, we was on the hill. All of us were standing in the hill, all the mm-hmm. regular students. Yeah, you you must came over there to come see the freshman. Yeah, uh, yeah. The fresh, <laughs> the freshman. <laughs> I, went, I went come. I went coming to see you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, man. Nah, for real. All right, let me get serious, man. All right, because we got folks right. on here. My bad. But no, nah, man. <laughs> 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 hey, nah, hey, man, all right, all right, let's get serious. All right, I got one more question to ask you. I got to ask you one more thing. Man, Dante Hall, my favorite player. Yeah. Man, tell me the craziest thing you saw Dante Hall do, whether it was at practice or in the game, and what made Dante Hall one of the best returners in NFL history? First of all, the man is 5'8". Right. Shifty as heck. Right. Strong as heck with, with his lower body. People don't realize he's thick, lower body, thick leg. Right. So he's able to bounce off stuff and he, he's so powerful for lower body that he his lateral movement is ridiculous. So um they did all kinds of stuff that you would be even in practice, even in practice, um he was a heck of a receiver. I wish he was used more. Um could get in and out of the breaks ridiculously. Um but man, I, it's so many. I don't even I don't even know. I think my rookie year in Denver he had a stupid catch where he spun off, got a step back, spun around. <laughs> yeah, it was stupid. It was dope. Hey, was I, I, I remember that. That that, that play, he, he catched the ball, stepped back, turned around, spin. Yeah, yeah, but but see, the thing I'd be asking him, I was like, bro, how do you think of doing that, though? Like, most of the time you catch the ball, you just boom, you, get, you try to get. It's like, how do you think the step, the step back, the spin? Like, I don't, I don't know. It's just a natural ability to like be able to. Like when you saw that play, did you find yourself cheering like like a fan? Like, or, or were you yeah, in the game? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just just like you, how we are, like watching the, you know, oh, oh, like <laughs> I went in on that play. Went, yeah, yeah, I went in. I went in on that play. So I'm, I'm watching like a fan. You know what I mean? Right. right. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's it's yeah, it, it, fan. Yeah, fan, yeah, fan. And boy, whatever them cats be talking about. <laughs> I'm gonna be that. If we had doing one on ones, he's shaking people. I'm gonna be a fanboy that day. You know what I mean? So I don't care nothing yeah. about it. Like that's, that's Dante Hall. Like you know, do you think yeah. he gets his uh his respect as far as where he is, like in the record books, or like as an all time great? As a returner, yeah, um, could be more. I think a lot of people kind of diminish you know, being a returner. Um, that, that's that's a difficult part. Of the game. Um, so I, he gets respect. I mean, he's a human joystick, right. guys age really 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 know 
I think the younger generation, you got to pull up on YouTube, right? Um, and and to see how and, crazy he really went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, you see guys running around, but they don't really, really know. And and I do that. So I'm gonna lie. I do. I pull up YouTube. I say, man, look at this. Right. Like this is. They're like, cool. Who is it? Like even with Prime. You know, they know Coach Prime, Coach Prime. But I'm like, let me go pull up Deion Sanders or Barry Sanders highlights for you. Barry Sanders. Yes. If when you watch it, then you'll be like. Like, damn, coach, he was he was fire. Like, you know what I mean? I know, right? I do, I do with Bo Jackson. I do it, you know, I do it a lot. So right. even with guys that 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 may come around, you know, um, that they might not really know, or remember. I'm gonna show them like, hey, this dude was legit. You gotta, you know, because we have guys come around. You might talk to them, and they might meet them and and see. But I gotta show them like this guy was legitimate. So. Um, Nah, it's just it's just part of that generation that you gotta show them for them to believe it. So in your time in the league, best corner you played? <sighs> Champ Bailey. What made Champ Bailey so good? It's and what was that when you and when you went up against Champ, what were you thinking in your mind? Oh, fish. It's really you don't even realize it until after the fact. But we know, like, you know, Champ, Charles Woodson, um, those guys are really, really good. Um Champ's hips, man. Just his hips, being able to turn and run, his quickness, his ball skills. I feel like he was a really good corner. Um, True Font wasn't bad in Seattle. He was a guy that that yeah. that was you know underrated. I think that, that I got to play against, um, practice against, obviously Ty Law and Pastor Tan uh, weekly. Oh. Um, it was daily. Shoot, um, those guys were really they were veterans, but they were really really savvy dudes. So I so I learned a lot, you know, from the, like I said, the Ty Laws and Pastor Tans. Uh, some of those guys, but really like the that cat that you had on before, man, Colin Rogers. I think he go down. Of course, I don't think I get a chance in the league, but just going against him at practice, man. Carl Rogers really, really good DB. I think he underrated. Was underrated in the league. Man, Lowe's um, good. Lowe's was good, buddy. Lowe's, Lowe's was quick, very quick. Right. Um, Twitchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I always mention him when people talk about corners because he was really uh, uh, athletic. Quick, long corner that then uh, I don't think it. I respect the lead that he didn't make a Pro Bowl or two or whatnot. But like I feel like um, in his time, even in San, San Fran and Washington, he did his thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Throughout his career, um, but I just know going up in college wise, going up against um, him and some of the guys that we had were, were really good corners. Roger Hood, some of the boys that got to the lead, that got to play. Man, you know? I forgot. Man, that team was so talented, bro. Like you, Hood on one side of that corner. Los Rogers on the other side of that corner. DT playing linebacker. Los Dansby playing linebacker. T. Rob had the season of his life playing safety that year when he moved to safety. Hey, I go like, bro. You you got some your memory's outstanding, bro. bro man, come on, man. man, T. Rob, yeah, Dansby. You know what I'm saying? That was the year we had Ronnie Cadillac, J. Cam, myself, Devin, Ben, Mix. The old line had Marcus McNeil. Like, like, man. Shoot, Detroit Reddick, all them boys, man. D line, Jay Rattler, Reggie Torboard, like, like everybody went to the league. Everybody Spence, went to the league. Spence, Spence yep. went to the so, league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Will Herring. Will Herring. Yeah. Big, boy, that you earlier, Spencer Johnson. Yeah. Like, yeah, loaded. Stanley? Loaded. Yeah, Stanley. Golly, you know, I did not realize how loaded that team was in 03. I think, I think Q, um, was a baby. I think he was a red shirt. Groves, Groves. Yeah, cute I, man. God bless him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he so was we, a baby. Yeah, yeah. So we, yeah, we had like I think. Well, I, I don't think I ain't think I know because it was my think my senior year because that's when Pat Lee he was he was a baby. Pat Lee, Pat it, Sims, it, Pat Sims. Yeah, it, we we had a lot of time. Bro, had a, a lot. Of and and I, and I think that's why we were really good. They were able to get a lot of talented guys in Auburn and, and, and when we just them. said all those people. A lot of those people came from Georgia. A lot came from Florida. A lot came from Louisiana. You had some from Louisiana. That you still mm-hmm. had some from Bama. How does Auburn get that imprint back to where they're recruited strongly in all four or five of those states? That's a good question, brother. I think um, I don't know what the what the landscape was then. Or you know how to how it has changed, um, but that's really a good question. Really, just digging in and trying hard, and, and I think what happened, what we did, 
was did a really, really good job of knowing, developing, and getting the players from those states that were good players. Right. I don't think they <clears throat> they missed some, but they didn't really miss a lot. So if you have a developmental player, a DT, like a lot of people didn't know about him, but he ended up being a second round pick. You right. see what I'm saying? Right. So 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 I think I think they did a great job then in recruiting and being able to get really good football players that might have not been um the the you know the higher the highest recruited guys. Right. They knew what they were looking for, and, and like Spencer, Nick Spencer, he was, he was recruited, but he came in as a linebacker and ended up going to the NFL as a big defensive, athletic defensive tackle. Right, I think he did a lot of uh, good developing in, in in those guys, and not necessarily going to get the, the highest rated players from those states, but guys that they knew that would be they can get to be able to come and play and develop. Now that that that, that makes a lot of sense because if you think about it, like even Los came, like Los Dansby came in with wide receiver. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I talked to I, I be laughing to this day in the little group chat. I tell her he always asked, he, he asked Coach Knox for a bubble screen. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I said, I, I said, man, you're big, tall, behind, he's 6'5", 190. Talk about, can I get a bubble screen? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 nah, nah, he's a receiver, but he ended up being one of the better linebackers and the best linebacker to come through Auburn. So, man. they they knew what they what they saw. You know, and they were like, you know what, we, this kid's boy is athletic. Let's take him. Well, you know, we didn't even say, we didn't even mention B. Um, we didn't even mention uh, BJ uh, was on that 03 team, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brandon Jacobs was you know, on that team. Yeah, Jacob, yeah. Man, With him. I mean, yeah, ended up being a you know, Super Bowl champion, one of the better backs in, in, in the Giants history, and toting it, running folks over. And he always been like that, though. I mean, you know, unfortunately, they didn't really do it right at Auburn with him. You know what I mean? But but that dude was a beast. Come yeah. in, he came in bowl practice, run, you know, trying to run folks over and everything else. So. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was playing. Well, he, he he was coming for that spot. <laughs> He's coming for that spot, and I'm like, I ain't never seen a dude this big that run that fast. I'm like, what? what like, what, where you find this dude? You know, yeah, they tried to play him everywhere too. I used to talk to BJ. He's be like, hey, no, he wasn't even trip, but he's always be like, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a tail back, and I'd be like, bro, man, just go do it. Them folks said he ain't really trip. You know, he tried everything. You know what I mean? Like, you know what? That one thing I say about BJ, like he did. And and, and and but at the end of the day, he knew what he was. You know, he was right. a hell of a running back. He knew right. he was a hell of a running back. Like, like, man, you know, we had great backs, but he know I was a hell of a running back. And I'm a show. I'm a show whoever didn't let me or whoever's fault it was that what I what I am. And he did, right. you know. So so that that was a you know a great job by him, and I'm glad he did good things because he knew he you know he's a running back. Not to say he couldn't be a DN or a linebacker. Of course he could have. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he's a freak. He's a freak. But but. At the end of the day, I'm gonna run this ball, and I'm gonna show people in the world that I can be tall and big and run this damn ball. So, hey, so that man. was you know, that's what, what the hell he did, did too. That's what he did. That's what he did. That's what he did. <laughs> no, so man, I see the, yeah, yeah, man, J man, look, man, where can people find you on Instagram and on, on Instagram, and Twitter too? Well, yeah, my name Jarris McIntyre. Um, it's, it's my Twitter, and then and then um, I'm, my IG is J M A C C C eighty one. So right, go, you sure. know, check me out, follow me and all that good stuff. Most of it's about my my, my high school boys. Right. Well, you know, sometimes a little personal stuff, but for the most part, it's my high school boys, man, and trying to help them and develop them and get exposure. Matt, look, I know I know you're a 12. Well, let me get in that closet, dog. I need to get someone new shoe. Hey, hey, come on down here, man. I got you. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> hey man, hey, that's it, man. Philip Duke signing out for the casual flicks. I'm out. I appreciate you, brother. Man, appreciate you, bro. Thank you, man.